Considering the available attribute points, I will distribute them strategically to enhance my character's capabilities in specific areas. Here's how I would allocate the attribute points. Body. I will invest one attribute point in body. Increasing this attribute enhances my physical resilience, health, and raw power, which can be valuable in combat situations and provide more options for tackling physical challenges. Reflexes. I will invest one attribute point in reflexes. This attribute improves my agility, speed, and overall reflexes, making me more adept at gunplay, evasion, and melee combat. It allows me to react swiftly in intense situations, providing a tactical advantage. For heavier weapons, I will choose to align myself with submachine guns and rifles. Appropriate perks in this circumstance would be Bullseye and Executioner. The perks Desperado, Long Shot Drop Pop, and Rio Bravo each offer unique benefits that align with a playstyle focused on handguns, stealth, and combat effectiveness. Here's why I would consider choosing these perks. Desperado. This perk increases the damage of handguns and revolvers by 5 fry for each cold blood stack. As a character who relies on firearms proficiency, this perk synergizes well with my playstyle, allowing me to deal more damage with my handguns when I have higher cold blood stacks. Slong shot drop pop. This perk increases the damage of rifles and submachine guns by 10 when, by tiring from outside the enemy's effective range. While my primary focus may be on handguns, having the ability to deal increased damage with rifles and submachine guns in long-range engagements provides versatility and options in combat scenarios. Rio Bravo. This perk increases the damage of shotguns by 25 and reduces their reload time by 20. Shotguns excel in close quarters combat, and this perk enhances their effectiveness, allowing for devastating close range encounters and quicker follow-up shots. By selecting these perks, I would be able to optimize my combat performance, capitalize on my chosen weapon proficiency, and adapt to different engagement distances. However, it's important to note that perk choices can be subjective, and the best selection ultimately depends on personal preference and playstyle. Given the lack of time constraints and the potential benefits of completing side jobs, it would be wise to take advantage of the opportunity to earn more money and upgrade my arsenal and skills before undertaking the main heist mission. Investing time in side jobs can provide valuable resources, enhance my combat abilities, and potentially open up new avenues for exploration and interaction within Night City. By completing side jobs, I can accumulate additional funds to purchase better weapons, cybernetics, and equipment which will significantly yeah, improve work. my chances Please of success the during the heist. Walls in here, grab some shady running soft. No, not just any punk. Over the counter, we fix cyber decks. But if you come recommended and you know what you are looking for, I'm sure you will find it. Moreover, engaging in side jobs allows me to gain experience, build relationships with key individuals, and uncover hidden information that may prove crucial in navigating the challenges ahead. While the heist mission is undoubtedly important, adequately preparing myself for its challenges and increasing my overall effectiveness should not be overlooked. Therefore, I will choose to undertake the side jobs. Recognizing that the extra time invested in these tasks will ultimately contribute to a stronger and more successful outcome during the main heist mission. You might extract some shim soft or subroutines. Seems worth a try, either way. As I prepare to undertake my first side job to retrieve the ping quick hack, I feel a sense of anticipation and excitement. T-Bug, my Netrunner contact, has informed me about the potential of this quick hack, which could be a valuable tool in my arsenal. It's always thrilling to acquire new technology and expand my cybernetic abilities.
get to a ripper, man. I... Yeah! I'll pay you! Mm, depends. What's wrong with you? You serious? You want my patient history, too? Just want to be sure it's no cyber psychosis or anything. No, it's a... <laughs> Normal implant malfunction. Happy? You helping me or what? All right. Great! Why are we standing here? <laughs> to the car! Now! I recognize that cybernetic malfunctions, especially those related to personal or intimate areas, can be distressing and deeply personal for individuals. It's crucial to approach this situation with sensitivity and respect, keeping in mind the individual's dignity and privacy. Uh, satisfaction guaranteed, they said. Let me guess. Mr. Stud, XCV-19 series. Yeah, how'd you know? Know my implants, including the black market stuff. Faulty series, got recalled. Still selling it on the street, though. Hey, <laughs> listen, thanks for not laughing at me. Appreciate it. It ain't easy, I'll tell you that. Fuck. Just our luck. Ah! Go, just go, mow him down! Chill, chill. While the task may seem unusual or uncomfortable, it is important to prioritize their well-being and provide them with the support they need. Navigating this side job requires a delicate balance between professionalism and empathy. I must put aside any personal discomfort or judgment and focus on the individual's welfare, ensuring they receive the necessary medical attention and care. My role is to offer assistance, understanding, and a reassuring presence throughout the process. As I notice smoke coming from the man's crotch and recall that the specific model of cybernetic implant he possesses had been recalled, a sense of urgency and concern immediately washes over me. The situation has escalated, and it becomes evident that the malfunction poses a significant risk to the individual's well-being. My primary focus now is ensuring the man's safety and preventing any further harm. The potential dangers associated with a malfunctioning implant, coupled with the presence of smoke, indicate an immediate need for medical intervention. Faster! Faster! It is crucial to act swiftly to prevent any potential damage to the individual or the surrounding environment. I can't! <laughs> okay, we're- Hey, you after! I'll call you! But- <sighs> I can't! Oh, I can't! As I receive the NCPD transmission about nearby criminal activity and learn about the monk who has been forcefully cybernetically augmented. Are you okay? Don't you take a vow against chip and implants? Of course we do. You think I did this to myself? I apologize, I cannot bow in greeting. I'm still adjusting to my situation. 
Hold on. Somebody forced you? Not just me. My brother, too. They drugged us. Desecrated my body. And all the while, they mocked me. How can you do this to a fellow human being and still mock them? A mix of concern, empathy, and a sense of duty immediately wells up within me. The situation described is undoubtedly tragic, and the plight of the monk and his brother resonates deeply with my own principles of justice and compassion. The fact that the monk's brother has fallen victim to the maelstrom, gang's brutal cybernetic augmentation only adds to the urgency of the situation. It is clear that immediate action is required to rescue him from this dire predicament. The heinous act of forcibly augmenting an individual against their will represents a gross violation of personal autonomy and human rights, and it cannot be left unchallenged. I recognize the gravity of the task at hand and understand that rescuing the monk's brother from the clutches of the Maelstrom gang will likely entail significant risks. However, I firmly believe that standing up against such injustice and restoring hope to those who've been victimized is a vital part of my role in Night City. I do not wish for him to end up like, like I have. Chrome sucking psychos. It won't be easy. Maelstrom never goes down the easy road. The fucking clowns. Help us, please. But without any bloodshed, I beg you. I'll see what I can do. Either way, your brother's getting out. I do not know how to thank you. They're keeping him in a shop just north of here. You shall find it next to the road along the docks. As I prepare to confront the Maelstrom gang and secure the monk's brother's freedom, my mind is focused on devising a strategy that maximizes the chances of success while minimizing unnecessary bloodshed. It is important to approach the situation with a clear mind and a steady hand, combining my skills in stealth, combat, and hacking to ensure a swift and efficient rescue operation. Simultaneously, I remain mindful of the broader implications of this incident. The forced cybernetic augmentation perpetrated by the Maelstrom gang serves as a stark reminder of the dangers and ethical concerns surrounding the misuse of advanced technology. It reinforces the need for responsible regulation, the protection of individual autonomy, and the prevention of such heinous acts in the future. In my ideal vision, I would have preferred to resolve the situation without resorting to lethal force. I had initially intended to approach the rescue mission with caution, using non-lethal means and my skills in stealth and subterfuge to neutralize.
the Maelstrom gang members and extract the monk's brother unharmed. However, circumstances can rapidly escalate, and I found myself thrust into a firefight where the preservation of life became increasingly difficult. The tragic reality of Night City is that sometimes violence becomes the only means to ensure one's survival and accomplish a mission. In this instance, the Maelstrom gang members left me with no choice but to defend myself and the monk's brother with lethal force. Is a somber reminder of the harsh nature of this world and the difficult decisions that must be made. While the loss of life is undoubtedly regrettable, it is crucial to acknowledge the responsibility that rests with those who initiated the violence. Plantations against my police. Please, I do not want them. Calm down. It's over now. I'm not with them. So, what are you doing here? What happened? Glad I got here in time. Are you okay? Did they do anything to you? I was lucky. They could not decide which implant would be funnier. Cyber psychos. The lot of them. One... one of them wanted to remove my jaw. The thought itself gave me shivers. Thankfully, did not get the chance. To what do I owe this intervention of yours? Was walking by and caught some lame jokes about metal monks. Thing about Maelstrom. They're never just joking. Not with the truths that your brother sent me. He didn't want the same thing to happen to you. Thank you for coming to my rescue. But my life is not worth the death of others. One good deed does not justify the suffering you have sown. You have committed evil in its purest form. I liked your brother more. You know, if it wasn't for me, you'd be a chrome cripple. I appreciate your goodwill, but I cannot be grateful for the loss of human life you have caused. The suffering we commit onto others always find a way back to us. Always. Leave me. I must catch my breath before I go to my brother. It is him who needs saving now. The Maelstrom gang's actions forced me into a situation where self-defense became paramount, and the priority was to save the innocent life that was in immediate danger. It is a delicate balance, knowing when to extend mercy and when to defend oneself and others. I understand the monk's disappointment and his expectation that I would have found a way to complete the mission without causing harm. As a person who strives for justice and seeks nonviolent solutions, whenever possible I cannot deny the weight of those lives lost. This experience serves as a stark reminder of the complexities of my role as a mercenary in Night City and the moral dilemmas I may face along the way. Moving forward, I will reflect on this encounter and use it as a learning experience, seeking ways to further hone my skills and adapt my approach to minimize the loss of life in future missions. Every situation presents an opportunity to grow, and I will strive to find better ways to navigate the challenges and protect the innocent 
even in the face of aggression. That's one way to put it. Anyway, just calling to say I transferred the funds. Uh, well, they managed to save your, y you know. Yeah, as much as they could. At least the pain is gone. Anyway, once it heals, I'll get a better model. Something top shelf. Why the hell would you do that? Um, is that a trick question? Why does anyone get a Mr. Stud? To keep Splash back down at the urinal? Forget I asked. See ya.